As you can see, we are back in Maya, and since my last video on Maya, lots of things have changed. We've got now the Arnold Render menu at the top, Look DevX, Shading Editor, and the USD Layer Editor. And these are the three things I want to talk about today. So first of all, Look DevX is a new shading authoring tool that allows you more flexibility with USD assets and also native Maya assets. Right now, though, the limitation is that you can only work in a USD stage to create shaders. So that's a caveat that you need to know right off the bat. To get started, you would need to create a new stage with a new name. And you can see a stage has been created. And you also need a geometry, ideally, to attach something to. So you can right-click the stage shape and you can add a new primitive. And let's say we want to have a cylinder. You can see now that's a USD geometry. I can right-click that in the stage, assign new material, and we can pick on a standard surface shader. You can see it creates the scopes and the shaders and the compounds. I can right-click them and show them in look DevX. And this is the basic view of of a compound and then the shader in between this. And now let's go and hit file import and import an FVX asset. Right, as you can see, we now have the geometry in Maya and it's a pretty nice topology. It's very detailed and you will be able to use this asset um, once you download the scene files, you will get the UST files, the Maya files, uh, the render files and also the asset here. So if you want to support me, check out my Patreon. The link is below. Um, and now let's convert this to a USD asset because right now this just lives in Maya. You can see it's as a default Maya hierarchy here. So similar to what we just did before, let's create a new stage, stage with new layer. And then I can double click the anonymous layer and I want to save it to my scene, right? So let's just name this Chappie. And this will now create a USD file on disk. You will see it right here. There's a USD file, one kilobyte. And now what I want to do, I want to name my stage to Chappie as well or whatever you want to want to name it and then i want to right click this cp final maya geometry and duplicate it as usd data under this shape here and once that is copied over i can delete the original geo and now this lives under the usd stage i can save you'll see now it will save to chappy usd and also now you will see that the Maya file is really small, 54 kilobytes, and the Chappie USD file is 58 kilobytes. And now we are in USD land. Um, as I said before, let's create a shader, similar as we just did before. I can right-click the geo, assign new material, on a material, and you can see we have access to Material X standard surface, to USD previous surface shaders, and you can all use them together, which is really awesome. You'll notice it created the MTL scope automatically, and then the same shader as just before. And right click, show it, look DevX, and we get the compound. I rename this to Chappy Shader or whatever you want to do. That's a compound. And also these um, ports here, they, they will be filtered out in a newer version of LookDevX. It's just for now, um, the version just exposes pretty much everything. Um, but I'll talk about these ports a little bit in a detail just now. So let's just save it. And this is now our shader assigned. And what I want to do quick, I just want to create a couple of lights just to make this a little bit more interesting. Um, so let me do that. Right, so now we do have a basic lighting setup in place and we have a camera, we have depth of field and this is roughly what I want to look at. So now let's work more on the shading side. Let's talk about setting up a material and everything that we need for our little chappy guy. Again, if I deep dive into the standard surface, you'll see that we just have our material. Let's actually stop the render so we can work a little bit more fluid. Uh, we can maybe um, enable the lighting in the viewport. That's also something really nice to just see that. That's a little bit better. We have this, this compound way to work, right? The standard surface is just our basic material as, a, as you know it from the hypershade. So there's no, no difference in the parameters. So I want to create a quick compound, right? So technically what I always do, I always load an image node, which brings in my texture, which comes in here. And most of the time I either color correct them or I do a range override. For instance, I have a um, roughness map that I need to maybe change the min and max values for, right? So this is now my compound. I want to connect the image to my color correct input. And then I want to pass it through the range node, same way, input. And then I have my output. If I select it, and hit Control G, I can create a compound, which is just stored. Essentially, it's, it's boxing it up. I can rename this. Let's say we want to name this image reader. 
like that. And you'll notice there's nothing exposed on the top level. So I have no controls and we want to change that. So I'm diving in here and all we got to do is hook up the out of my range to the output. So um, we have that connection established. And then we can also expose values to the outside of this node. Um, obviously, we want to be able to control the file name. So let's expose that. And let's say for my color correct right now, I just want to expose gamma and for my range, let's do a little bit more. Let's do um, input, min, and max, and output, min, and max, and probably the, the smooth stepping as well. All right, so these are now exposed to the top level. So if I jump out up here, the image reader now has these things exposed, which is really cool. And you can also customize this a little bit, which is awesome as well. I can, for instance, say the gamma node should go to a new group. Let's name this color correct. So I know, or the artist will know what to change. And the input here will go to, um, oops, remove from group. And the input will go to a new group named range like that. We can reorder things if we need to. We can nest things. Let's see if I can get this out of there. And then we can just drag these values in here. So that is super cool. And the smooth stepping as well. We can also specify ranges like we can only allow the range node to work in a certain range. And we totally don't want to have it output to, to a value bigger than one. So we can just limit that and say input min is also in a zero to one range and same for these guys. And these are then locked. So you cannot slide them over a certain amount, which is pretty cool. And it's a very nice way to limit values that uh, should not be touched. So now we've got a simple image reader here with these things exposed, right? That's pretty cool. What I want to do now is let's say I want to create a base color reader. Maybe I'll just duplicate this node. So we have our bare bones. So control D this will give us a new image reader. Could name this to be base color like that. And now all we have to do is hook this up to our base color slot and then just add a file name. And that's pretty much all we have to do. Um, imagine now we want to have roughness as well. So I'm control Ding this. And now we have our roughness map. So I've got two things now. And imagine you have to do it 20 times and then hook it up again. So what you can do once you have your setup, you can control G this again to create another compound, like essentially a nested compound. And we can name this um, maybe texture loader or material loader, whatever makes sense to you. And again, same story as before, nothing is exposed, um, but now I can do the, the same thing. So I can hook up the out to the out, uh, to the output ports, the file names to my input, input ports. And you will notice again that they have no, no cool names. So we can right click, rename the port, let's say base color and roughness. And on the other end, we want to pretty much do the same. So this is the base color, base. So now we have base color and roughness ports exposed and we do have them on input and outside. So if you look at the texture loader now, you'll notice that we have these paths and what we can do now is we can just connect the base to the base color and you will notice these rollouts open up based on type, which is quite convenient. You can also open up them manually. You can plug them uh, vector to a float and it will know what to do as well. So you can just hook these things up and the output port goes to the Arnold surface. Cool thing as well is you can um, do a couple of things in here. You can change um, the connection style similar to Houdini, which is really nice to be able to be flexible on how you do that. You can have, you have several options on how to drop them. You can collapse nodes using one, two, three. It's also quite nice. And you can display the type, which is also helpful to know uh, what kind of node you are working with, right? So now that's the image reader. And now let's just um, hook up some texture and see what we get. And now these paths are connected. So let's hit render and see what we get. We definitely see the textures coming through, but it feels a little bit too dim. So uh, let's just uh, play a little bit with the exposure. Now let's imagine we want to showcase the roughness in the render. Right now, there is no isolate selected option. So you would need to connect the port to the surface node. And once that is connected, um, it will show the roughness value. And then you, you, you are able to do it the same way. You can obviously, we can now dive into our compound. We have our exposed materials. You can, we can now enable smooth stepping, um, play around with our min values. Maybe let's go 
0.1, so it's a little bit more reflective in areas. You can see that is updating, and then we can also maybe make it a little bit more rough in other areas. Maybe leave it at one and change this to 0.015, and let's update our output max to not go over 0.65, and our min um, should not go lower than 0.05. So now we're just compressing the ranges of our roughness nodes. And then if you're happy with that, you can reconnect it to the sanded surface and then you should get your beauty render back. In future tutorials, I will speak a little bit more about USD, how to create layers, how to actually work with lighting contacts, how to work in shading contacts and all of that. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I'm always reading them and trying to answer them as much as I can. And don't forget, we have our CG Launch Discord server, which is growing a lot. Mm -hmm.